let's talk about work and springs. Work is equal to force times distance. For the spring, the distance is going to be how far we've either stretched or compressed that spring from its natural length, which you could also call equilibrium. Force is going to be based on Hooke's Law. So let me go ahead and make some room down here. My force based on Hooke's Law says that the force is directly proportional, so equals some k times the length that we have either stretched or compressed our spring by. So we have this k, which is our spring constant, and x, which is the distance stretched or compressed. I can add k to my table here with all my units. So k, if you're using English units, is going to be pounds per foot. And if you are using metric units, it's going to be newtons per meter. For this particular example, we have pounds and feet. So we are going to be using the English units. That means that I want that force in pounds. And my final answer, the work needed, is going to be in foot pounds. But the very first thing that we've got to do with these problems whenever we're doing a spring and work problem is to figure out that spring constant k. I'm going to use this first statement to figure that out. It says a force of one pound is required to hold a spring 0.4 feet beyond its natural length. That 0.4 is the amount stretched. So I can go ahead and say that 0.4 in this case is equal to x. As I put this together then, I've got a force of one pound is equal to, I'm looking for k times that distance stretched, which is 0.4 feet. If I do my division, I have one divided by 0.4, which is going to equal one divided by four tenths also known as 10 fourths or 2.5. If you were to follow those units through, we had pounds divided by feet, and this does turn out to be pounds per foot. This is my spring constant. It's attached to the spring, and I can use it to calculate the force for any given length stretched. Now we can take a look at the second part of this question. It says how much work is required to stretch the spring one foot beyond its natural length. Well, we've already established that we can come up with a force based on that spring constant. So my force is given to me by this formula, and that's the spring constant 2.5 times x. 2.5 is in pounds per foot, and x is the distance stretched in feet. So this is gonna be times feet. So we end up with the unit that we needed for force. Let me move some more things out of the room here so we can continue working. So I've got my force and it is a variable force. So instead of using work is equal to force times distance, just as that formula, I need to use the integral instead. So work is equal to the integral of force times dx which is equal to, let's figure out those limits of integration. I am now stretching that spring one foot beyond the natural length. So as I write this spring here, stretched one foot beyond, I am going from zero to one foot. Those are my limits of integration. As I'm stretching along there, my force needed is going to change, right? The further away I am from the natural length, the harder I'm gonna need to pull on the string. So my limits of integration is directly related to the distance stretched. So I've got zero to one. My force is 2.5x and then I've got my dx. Let's give us some more room. We are ready to integrate. That is gonna give me 2.5. Integrating the x gives me an x squared divided by two, and we're gonna evaluate that from zero to one. Let's go ahead and divide 2.5 by two. That gives me 1.25. So the antiderivative that I'm gonna be evaluating is 1.25 
x squared from 0 to 1. This gives me 1.25 times 1 squared minus 0 squared, and I end up with 1.25. Now we can do a really quick units check. The unit for my force right here, we had already checked that one to be in pounds. dx is related to the distance stretched, and I'm going from 0 to 1 foot. So this one is in feet. So I'm feeling really good because I've got the unit of work that I needed, which is in foot pounds. In this next example, we are given this comparison. It takes 35 newtons to hold a spring stretched to a length of 15 centimeters from a natural length of 10 centimeters. Let's go ahead and label some of these things here. So 10 centimeters is my natural length, and it takes 35 newtons to get us stretched to a total length here of 15 centimeters, so 15 centimeters. The distance that we're looking for is that difference. So how far has it been stretched from the natural length? That's our x value, which in this case, 15 minus 10 is gonna equal five. This distance of five is five centimeters. Now I've got centimeters and newtons, so I am in the metric system. Let's make sure we've got exactly what we need for the metric system. In the metric system, I have meters per second squared, and then for the unit of work, joules, I need meters squared per second squared. So I need to do a unit conversion here from centimeters into meters. So I'm gonna do that first. So five centimeters times, I wanna get rid of centimeters. There are a hundred centimeters in one meter. So I can cancel my centimeters and I end up with 0 0.05, which is five divided by 100 meters. So I can replace my five centimeters with 0 0.05 meters. Now I'm ready to find that spring constant K. So step number one, We've got this force of 35 newtons, so force is equal to k times the distance traveled. I'm going to go ahead and keep that distance as meters. So my force of 35 newtons is equal to k times 0 0.05. And if I go ahead and divide both sides by 0 0.05, this gives me 700 is equal to K. So our force function is going to be 700 times X. So 700 times X, and we wanna make sure that X is in meters. Now we're ready to compute the work done. So it says how much work is required to stretch the spring from a total of 15 centimeters long, where I am with that second spring right now, to 20 centimeters long. So if I were to draw a third spring in here that is even more stretched, now I'm going from a total length of 15 centimeters to a total length of 20 centimeters, but remember our value x is displacement. How far away am I from that natural length? I'm gonna draw these in in pink instead. So how far am I from the natural length? At 15, x is equal to five centimeters. I am five beyond the natural length of 10, and at 20, I am, compared to my natural length of 10, I am 10 centimeters beyond. Now, I do know that I want everything in terms of meters instead, so I need to divide both of these by 100, both of these by 100, and that's gonna put me on the interval, five divided by 100 is 0.05, and 10 divided by 100 is 0 0.10. These are my limits of integration. I'm gonna stretch that starting at a distance of 0 0.05 meters beyond the natural length to a distance of 0 0.10 beyond the natural length. Let's put this together in our work integral. So in our integral, this is step number two now, I've got, I think, just about everything that we need work is equal to the integral force times dx, so f dx. In the case of our spring, my force is 700 times x, and I was really careful to make sure that the units here are newtons, so 700 times x and dx. 
my limits of integration are going to start me off at 0 0.05 meters beyond the natural length 2.10. So I've got 0 0.05, 2.10. The hard work is over. I am ready to integrate. As I integrate this one, it turns out really pretty nice. I'm gonna keep the 700 and then x squared divided by that new power two. And I'll be evaluating this from 0 0.05 to 0 0.10. 2 goes into 700 and that leaves me with 350. So I'm going to take this antiderivative of 350 x squared evaluated from 0 0.05 to 0 0.10. So in my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and take 350 times 0 0.10 squared minus 350 times 0 0.05 squared, and I end up with 2.625. So this is equal to 2.625. I made sure that all of my units were in meters. So this turns out to be 6.25 Newton meters, or we could say the unit is simply a unit of joules. I hope this was helpful. Do take a look at the next one. You guys are doing great.